So I have been doing some electrical schematics. I'm not an expert in it, but I feel this is exactly the time where I can have some good foundations on creating electrical schematics. So today we will go through one electrical schematic and we will use KiCAD or KiCAD as the electrical schematic creation tool um, or also known as eCAD. Uh, well, we can use other tools as well. For example, Altium, Eagle, or um, circuit um, creation tools. It doesn't really matter, but these foundations are something I feel are across any tools that can be applied across any electrical schematics. So for today, we have uh, KiCAD, and we will be looking at an electrical schematic tool right here. As you can see, I already have some components on uh, the electrical schematic uh, page. And the very first thing that we will look into is something here right at the bottom hand corner of the electrical schematic. And this is called the title block. So in KiCAD to edit it, we'll go to file and then page settings. Now this is where we can put in some of the very basic information about the schematic itself. And it's very, very important, starting with the issue date, the revision, the title of the project, the company, and a comment is something where I put in one sentence description about the project, about what the schematic does. And finally, uh, the team name or the designer's name, and also, well, with today's world, I also like to put in the website address of the project so that people can go and find out more context and a description about the schematic. The second thing about an electrical schematic is um, about how we are laying out different components of the circuit. So I've done a few readings and uh, the good practice seems to be that you start with the higher voltages from top to bottom and then there must be a logical signal flow from left to right. So let's look at this schematic once again and we are going to start with uh, the top circuit, the top left hand side of the circuit as uh, the power management circuit because this is where the higher voltage comes in and you also um, have the signal flow starting right from here. So I'm just gonna grab this entire component and let's do a move. So I'm gonna press M and uh, position it right here. And uh, the second thing, similarly, after the power management circuit is probably the brain of the entire circuit, which is the microcontroller in this case. So I'm going to drag it in right beside it. All right. And uh, so I have the top two components, which are of uh, higher voltage, and it is uh, very important in signal flow as well. And then the second row is a little bit of the infrared receiver, emitter, some sensor, some LED indicators. And finally, I also have the programming. Now, after ensuring that I basically have all the components inside the schematic paper, I actually like to box it up uh, in different sections so that it's just visually clearer to the eye. So in KiCAD for this, I'll go right at the bottom to place graphic lines or polygons. So I'm gonna use these tool and uh, box it up. And I can zoom in a little bit for the individual sections. And these are basically personal preferences, but I also sort of box up the title of each of the logical blocks and maybe a division here as well and a box up the title here. Maybe move the title a little bit. All right. So that is how um, we have placed all the different components inside a different logical blocks and it sort of uh, makes it a lot more cleaner and segmented for any reviewer to come and uh, view this schematic. The third thing that we are going to look at is something called the designators. This is where we label each of the components. So I have uh, purposely made some mistakes here. So you will realize that this is a little Schottky diode and I have labeled it with a lowercase 
uh, D2. Now, it is uh, good to actually label it as capital. And I have another one right here. So I'm going to change it to capital as well. Now, this is uh, nothing to worry about because when we are actually, uh, say, trying to place the component, let's try to search for the short key diode, you will see that by default, the tool itself will give us the designator. And in fact, uh, there is an official way of uh, uh, having a standard way of the designator uh, by the component. And uh, this is, uh, we can find it in the Wikipedia reference as well. So for example, C is for capacitor, D is for diode, um, F is for fuse. Uh, let's go and look something at say transistor. Transistor is not T, it is actually Q and transformer is T. So I do have a couple of uh, mistakes in terms of transistor. So this is a MOSFET. So I'm going to change it to Q right here. And I have another transistor here, an NPN transistor. So I'm going to label it as Q. Once again, this is nothing to worry about capitalization and the designator because the tool itself will sort of remind us. Now, the other thing that I like to do in terms of the component is display more data about it. So over here, it just says it's a Q1. And uh, what is the manufacturing part number? What is the type of this component? For this, uh, we have uh, the symbol properties list in KiCad. And uh, for that, uh, I like to just enable the values and uh, the part number so that people can easily uh, do an internet search based on the part number. So there you see, it is a P-channel MOSFET and uh, there is the part number BSH203. I think I'm gonna do the same for this short key diode as well. So the value, maybe not the value, I mean, we can sort of see that it is a short key diode, but definitely the part number. And there is another one here, the part number once again. And uh, maybe for this one as well, especially, uh, yes, we can maybe put the value and the part number. Now, sometimes uh, this is another example where we have uh, LEDs. These are pretty self-explanatory from the component symbol itself. But uh, what kind of LED is it? So let me go ahead and uh, maybe show the value. It is a yellow LED. So I'm going to do the same for the rest. So in this schematic, uh, these are all for yellow LEDs. So once again, it's good to go through all the components, make sure that the designators are labeled well, they're capitalized. And in case we want to put in the value and the manufacturing part number, we should probably do it. Now, this is the last one. This is an LDO, and I'll also kind of display the part number so that it is easy to do a search. And I just have a couple more. So I'll just come here and uh, display the value and the part number for the IR receiver as well as the IR emitter. It looks like a normal diode, but actually it is not. Okay, so that gives a lot of information about every single part. The next thing that we want to look at are power connectors. Usually there will be two kinds. One is uh, the higher voltage and then the other one is ground. Now when we put ground, it should be all be facing down and the higher voltage uh, power connectors like five volts, 3.3 volts and other types of uh, higher voltages should be pointing up. So over here in my schematic, I have a few ground and they are sort of just pointing to the left. So let's go ahead and rotate it. So I'm going to rotate this down, rotate this down, and rotate this down. Are there any others? Yes, there's one more here. And there is one more here. Right, just uh, to make sure that all our grounds in our circuit are pointing down. This sort of makes it cognitively easier for us to know what is going on with the circuit just to see all the grounds pointing downwards. Similarly, we should definitely ensure that things such as the power flag are pointing up 
And um, also, if, even if we have labels such as 2.8 volts in this case, uh, which is connecting to the same other labels, they should also be pointing up. The next thing that we're going to look at are text placements. Now, usually there are two kinds of orientation that I like to put. Either they are all upright and it's just easy to read from left to right, or they are rotated clockwise or anti-clockwise, just so that all the texts appear very, very similar and consistent. So let's uh, look at some of the text here. We will see that the ground here are um, rotated, but I have the space to make it upright. So let me go ahead and make it upright. And also to make sure that uh, they are not clashing, especially if we have space to kind of uh, space them out. Now I will also come and zoom into this segment. Uh, the LED yellow words are a little too long and this is where I will rotate it, but I will keep a consistent uh, rotation angle. In this case, it is uh, going a little bit anti-clockwise. So I'm gonna do anti-clockwise, but keep it still all very, very uniform. And that looks pretty consistent. So all the text, on this schematic, they are all upright or they are rotated anti-clockwise 90 degrees just once. That just makes the reading a lot easier. The next thing that we're going to look at are wire junctions, places where the wires are actually connecting to each other or they are just passing by each other without any connection. We have to make a distinction between these two types of junctions. So here I have a couple of examples. Here the power flag and the capacitor are connecting. So are they two junctions or just one junction? Well, they are two junctions. So I'm going to move the power flag right here. If they are two distinct junctions, then there should be two junction indicators. In examples such as this, this is not a junction at all. This is just a, a wire crossing over each other. So we don't have to worry. Whereas this uh, circle dot is a junction. I have another example in the temperature sensor circuit. So I'm also going to put the power flag here so as to make a differentiation that there are two distinct separate junctions. Finally, let's talk about annotations or comments or little descriptions that we like to put in our schematic. And these are very, very good practices to have because after all, who will remember what we did, what design decisions we made months uh, back in the past. So for annotations, there are two types of annotations I found. For example, one of them are just sort of explaining uh, what to do with the component. And the second type of uh, annotation are the design uh, decision annotation, like why is a certain resistor of a certain value or a certain capacitor of a certain value. Now, what I found is that we can have a uh, short annotations inside each of the logic blocks, but if we have long ones, for example, uh, say something like this, it is good to have footnotes. So what I'm going to do is I am going to label this uh, resistor as uh, R11 so that it matches with uh, what the component says. Uh, so with the capacitor and I'm going to sort of move all of them down here as a consolidated footnote. And similarly, I'm also going to move the R3 right here. And I do have one more on R14, which is like a long URL. So I'm also going to move this down here because these are all explaining why I made a certain decision. So let me clean up uh, a little bit. So I'm going to just delete uh, the drawing lines here. And I'm going to have a label saying that it is simply some footnotes and maybe box it up a little bit. Now we also should ensure that our text sizes are similar just so that it looks a lot more consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a similar size. All right. So that means I need to change the drawing. That's fine. All right. And if we wish, we can uh, do a slight editing and maybe change it to a solid line. Uh, just to ensure that these are not the logical blocks, but these are really, really subjective. 
All right, so these are how the footnotes look like. They are referenced uh, by the component number and a little bit of explanation on the design decisions. And otherwise, we will find that the rest of the annotations are right on the circuit itself. Uh, there are like some tiny ones on uh, when to solder probably or what this uh, circuit does. For example, I have a little description on the power management circuit. And that's it. Looks like our schematic is all ready for review by others. And that's why the last segment is all about exporting. We want to make sure uh, when we export, so for KiCad, we will go to file and then print. We do want to check the page setup a little bit and ensure that it is uh, A4 size. Now, before we export, we will do the last uh, ERC or electrical rules check and ensure that they pass. And finally, let's export it. So for export, we'll go to file and then print. And uh, yes, I will do the printing of the reference and the title block. Let's print it. Just because it's an A4 size, it just makes it a lot, lot easier. So I'm gonna save it as PDF and export it as schematic. And there you see, it has exported as schematic. So let me open it up. And I do like to export it as PDF as well. It's just so much more easy to share. And it's very, very clear when we zoom into each of the components. And it is also easy to print it out physically on a A4 size paper. So that was it about schematics. Uh, hopefully we learned a few good foundations for any electrical schematics that we can uh, employ, whether it is for a very, very simple schematic or in future for complicated schematics. Do you have any other foundations uh, that you like for a good electrical schematic? Let's share. Thank you so much.